for Let's Change Pace with a woman who's a beacon to us all. Geraldine Cox has devoted her life to the orphans of Cambodia and for much of that time we've reported on her remarkable work. Now Geraldine says she could lose everything because of COVID-19. The kids say to me, you know, what do I do for a living? And I say to them, I'm a beggar. And that is really what I am. I'm pretty good at it. I never ever thought that my kids would go hungry. I never, I never dreamt that that, that that was the case. For more than two decades, we followed Geraldine Cox's story. We have some Australian people here today from Australia, OK? Her home for lost children, a safe haven for the abandoned, disabled, abused, drug trafficked and disadvantaged in her Sunrise orphanage. She's survived military coups, received an Order of Australia and addressed the United Nations. Cambodia gives me all the mystery I could ever want. She's as tough as a lion and that shock of red hair has become her trademark. If people in Australia don't, don't often don't know my name or they don't know the name of Sunrise, but uh, uh, when people talk about me, they say, oh yeah, the lady with the, with the chopstick. Like all of us, the lady with that chopstick is feeling the economic shockwaves of COVID-19. It turns out you can't even escape the virus in rural Cambodia. Sponsors who have supported her for years, many of them Australian, pitching in what they can, simply can't afford it anymore. Some of them have been with me 15 years or more and they've written and said, look, it breaks our hearts, so I have to stop, but we have to stop. Um, so the children are understanding that it's not just Sunrise that's suffering, but it's a global thing. How has the coronavirus been impacting everyday life? In the beginning, uh, when this started, our cooks were afraid to go to the market to get food. The kids um, are helping now in the kitchen and everything because we've had to put a lot of our staff off. We used to give the children um, you know, a big bowl of rice, soup with meat in it, and another stir-fried dish with another um, type of meat in it, and fruit every three times a day. And we can't do that now. We've reduced their food to just two things, which is rice and um, soup, no fruit. Um, and, you know, the kids are saying, where's my fruit? Where's my fruit? I know there's been cases in a nearby village. You must be concerned that it might spread to the children. Our doctors won't even come out to us at the moment. We have doctors that come out twice a week and they are too fearful of coming out to a group our size. So we just tell them, don't get sick. Don't get a temperature, don't get a headache. Um, so this has been the worst crisis I've ever been through. I went through a, a violent military coup in 1997, which I thought was pretty bad. But uh, um, this is even more serious for us. You have kids of all ages. How do you begin to explain to them what's happening in the world right now? The older ones understand what a world crisis this is. But the little ones don't. And when I go down and walk towards them, they all go up like this for me to pick them up. And I can't. And how do you tell a four-year-old, darling, I can't touch you, I can't pick you up? You can't. That's got to be the hardest thing, Geraldine, right? With, with the younger kids not having that physical contact. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because these kids are all in need of love and affection because of what they've been through before they got here. Um, and now it's suddenly, you know, we can't do it. I have children with me that have been with me since they were toddlers and they're now 15 and 16. And um, I've always promised my kids that I'll always take care of them. And I'm just so afraid I won't be able to keep that promise. Um, it's been um, 27 years of my life. I never thought I wouldn't be able to um, attract donors to this cause. What happens if you have to close? We've got disabled children here. If we have to close down and we don't get enough money, those disabled kids have nowhere to go. Um, the government orphanages, which would be the only other place I could put my kids in, you wouldn't want to put a dog there. There are no places for a disabled child to go in this country for help. Nowhere. We're going to call the name. Geraldine has her own battles to face. In 2009, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent a double mastectomy. She's recently found another lump, which the specialists are keeping a close eye on. I'm the ever optimist. I'm, I really feel that my health, health issues are really right now low on my list of worries. This is 27 years of your life. Have you ever, I mean, could you ever contemplate walking away from this? This is such a, such a huge task, such an awful thing to be going through. You ask any mother, could she walk away from her family and from her kids? I mean, there's, there's your answer. 
know these kids in my life and they think I'm God that I can do anything and up until now I have I just need a little bit more help or a lot more help the older kids know I'm going on television today in Australia and they said to me would I, I pass on their blessings for all, for all the people that might be listening or watching and and give that they wish all of those people long life health strength wisdom and what we all need most they wish them peace It is such important work Geraldine and her team does for those Cambodian children and they need all the help they can get right now. If you can spare a couple of dollars, they will be so grateful. To donate, head to the website sunrisecambodia.org.au. That's sunrisecambodia.org.au. All donations, $2 and over, are tax deductible. <laughs>